right. Um, it's already eight o'clock. If other people join, fantastic. Um, either way, let's let's go ahead and dig into this. Sure. Um, the reason where, why where, we, where where are we keeping notes? Oh, there is a Cloud Events SDK design proposal Google Doc, which I'm going to paste into the chat room right here. I didn't know if you were going to use the normal one. Yeah, I'm not sure if I have. Um, I guess I could add a whole bunch of suggestions onto it, but I, I think this is fine for now. Okay, cool. Thanks. And we, and we were just joined by Carol. Hi, Carol. Hi, everyone. It's Carl here. Carl, great to meet you. Um, we're just kicking it off right now. And I just pasted the Google Doc where we're um, putting notes, ideas, everything into. Yeah, yeah, I see it's being updated live right now. Yep, that's right. Cool. Um, so to start from the beginning, the reason why we're doing this is because we came out with this great specification for coming up with a common envelope for event data. Um, and it's gotten a lot of attention already, but we need to make it easier for people to use. And a natural step, a natural next step is usually to create some SDKs. Uh, when polling the serverless working group and the cloud events group, it seemed like a whole bunch of people were already making SDKs. <laughs> they were just going off and kind of doing it in isolation. So we thought, hey, let's bring everyone together and see if we could kind of, um, you know, outline some priorities and some design goals for this thing. And maybe we can collaborate on these things together. So that's the, you know, that's the, the premise for all this, the why. Um, I think we should go around and do a quick round of uh, intros. Sounds so, good. Did anyone want to go first? Sure. Uh, this is Mark Peek. I'm with VMware. Uh, I've been involved in the serverless working group since it started in uh, cloud events. And I uh, am the lead head honcho of uh, Dispatch, which is an open source uh, serverless framework that uh, sits above other FASs. Great. Um, maybe I'll jump in real quick. Uh, my name is Austin Collins. Um, I'm the author of a piece of software called the Serverless Framework, pretty popular open source project, and also the CEO and founder of a company called Serverless Inc. Been involved for the Serverless Working Group uh, for a long time as well. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our company works on vendor agnostic abstractions to help people build serverless applications uh, across any serverless infrastructure provider. We care a lot about standardizing some of the popular concepts within serverless architectures um, because we believe a lot in vendor choice. Um, and we want to make it easier for all developers to use serverless infrastructure across providers without having to kind of get familiar with all the platform quirks, become respected platform experts. They should just have this common experience for deploying, you know, serverless functions or using other serverless infrastructure across providers. Um, and that's one of our, that's one of our big goals. That's why we are big fans of cloud events and um, some of the other things that we're just starting to talk about now in the serverless working group, like coming up with standard function signatures and whatnot. Um, yeah, and that's me. All right, I could go next. Um, so I'm Carl, I, uh, I'm also with with VMware and I also work with on Project Dispatch, like like Mark. Um, I was I was involved in, in the events work for Dispatch and um, I actually implemented the first version of Cloud Events in in, in Dispatch. Uh, um, what I'm looking forward to is is uh, SDK helping with first of all tracking the spec, of course, to be able to um, you know um, version the the SDK with with the spec, so I don't have to follow the changes. Well, I will have to follow the changes anyway, but to be able to to pick up the the proper version SDK and and yes, make it easier, make, make my life easier as a developer, consuming, producing, and 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 uh, dealing with with cloud events. Um, but I but I really, I'm really um, happy that, that this this thing came alive. <laughs> Me too. I can go next. <clears throat> my name is Matthias Wessendorf. I'm with Red Hat. Today I have two co-workers here because we are at a face-to-face -face meeting. Um, 
we started looking at cloud events from messaging perspective. Um, one of the motivations was also that in the Java enterprise ecosystem, there is the MicroProfile initiative, um, and they're going to start a new messaging specification that's not JMS. And one of the idea goals there was as well that um, for eventing, it could be modeled after the concept of cloud events. Um, yeah, when we were digging into this, we were starting to play with uh, some um, API and stuff like that. So that's why we are um, very happy that we can participate here. And I added some proposal already um, to this uh, document that we're currently all staring at. Yeah, I saw that. Great work. Thank you. Was that everyone? Probably not. I joined late. Uh, Klaus here. Oh, hey, Klaus. My name is uh, Klaus Dyson. I work for SAP. Um, we are contributing to Qplus, and I'm currently uh, starting to play around with cloud events for Qplus. And of course, I am, yeah, I suppose everybody playing with cloud events right now is starting with the same thing. So uh, somehow uh, working with those uh, attributes we defined so far and, and so on. And maybe uh, that's quite repetitive. So um, yeah, I would be happy to see that if, if some common libraries uh, somehow evolve. Great. Howdy, this is Scott from Scott Nichols from Google. I'm still ramping up, so I'm here to listen. Great to have you, Scott. What, uh, what, what team are you on or what product are you focused on over at Google? I'm a sister team to App Engine. Got it. Cool. Thanks for joining. Um, is that everyone? Mike Roberts, did you go already? Hey, Austin. No, I didn't. Uh, yeah, hi, everybody. I haven't been on any of these calls before, but I've been following the group for a while. Um, and I bumped into uh, a couple of the, uh, the folks from Google uh, two weeks ago when I was over in Velocity at Velocity in, in San Jose. So I thought I'd, I'd finally join in and, and just lurk on the, lurk on the sidelines. All right. Great to have you. Um, I think that's everybody. Let's go ahead and jump into the agenda here. And I'm wondering if anyone has feedback on this agenda. Here's, here's kind of how I thought this could work. Um, we list out the use cases for the SDK. Uh, there's already a pretty healthy list going uh, on the Google Doc. Um, and then we go through and we kind of stack rank those. We figure out, you know, what's the most important, what are the most important things that this SDK needs to do to actually put the cloud event specification into developers' hands tomorrow. Um, and so we can go through go through the exercise of stack ranking these use cases, see what see where our priorities are. And from there, we can start breaking this down into some potential milestones um, and the scope of each milestone uh, within respective cloud events SDK versions. And so on the Google Doc below the potential use cases, I put in a milestones and scope section. Um, with different cloud events SDK versions. And we could just put bullet points under each in terms of that describe what we think that version should seek to accomplish. Um, from there, uh, it's gonna be up to us to figure out how the work actually gets done. I think, um, you know, there's, we, there's no requirement that all of us here in the room go out and do this work, um, but we do have to figure out <laughs> who might be focusing on what um, to, so yeah, I figure we take it from there. The outcome of this should be getting some milestones and scope down for the SDK versions. And then we'd like to go take that to the main serverless working group call uh, this Thursday and just present them with kind of what we're, what we're considering uh, and get some feedback from them. And, and from there, I think we might be able to get a few more volunteers um, to help actually implement all this. Uh, anyway, does anyone have any thoughts on that agenda? Does that sound okay? Or do you have any other ideas? Sounds good to me. Okay. Well, let's kick it off then. Um, there's a list of potential use cases. These are all numbered, but they are not yet prioritized. Um, <clears throat> that's our next. That's our next challenge. So first off, before we go in and prioritize all this, does anyone have anything that they feel should be added? I'm just pausing because it's likely a few of you are, are reading this for the first time. <clears throat> uh, 
And I can go, I can go through a couple of these. I, I added in a few of them, so maybe I'll provide some context onto each one. Uh, the first one here is instantiating cloud events easily in code. This is simply being able to require in the SDK and do some type of, it could look like class-based instantiation where you're just creating a new instance of the cloud events class. You're actually kind of crafting this cloud event um, and setting the, the values of the event itself. Um, this seems kind of table stakes. If you want to actually do anything with an event, you know, have to build it first. Um, so that's what that is. Instantiating cloud events easily via event schemas. Not entirely sure how this would be implemented, but you know, perhaps it could look something like JSON schema, um, which you're able to pass in a JSON schema and create instances of that, do validation against the schema and the, and the rules that are baked into that schema. Um, bringing in event schemas, I think, could help out a lot um, to solve problems around testing events, solve problems around uh, validations, transformations, um, and even generating mock events uh, to help um, test out your, your serverless and event-driven architectures. Number three, assembling cloud events from various transports. Um, so there are different transport specifications that are being included um, as siblings to the cloud event specification. This is how you uh, handle cloud events in HTTP, for example. Um, ideally, if this SDK is going to make developer lives easier, it should be able to kind of create cloud events from various transports. Um, we got to figure out how that, that could work. So, uh, so, so a quick question there. When you, sure. you're talking about transports, but what about encodings? Uh, I think encoding should absolutely be included in this. Um, maybe I'll add a quick update. How about assembling cloud events from various tra transports and encodings? Yeah. Which are slightly different things. Yes. Additionally, validating cloud events by including a schema. I already discussed that briefly. Transforming existing events into cloud events via transformation mappings. This one's kind of an interesting one because, you know, it's the early days for the specification. It's very young. And we want to make this something that people can start using right away, regardless of industry adoption. Um, we've been fortunate enough to have some of you know, the, the industry influencers involved in the cloud events conversations. And a lot of them are implementing this already, which is amazing. Um, but we want to move faster and we want to kind of make sure cloud events fit nicely into all the things that people are using already. So being able to simply transform uh, popular common events on different platforms, whether it's AWS, whether it's uh, Google, whether it's um, popular webhooks from Stripe or GitHub or something like that, uh, being able to transfer those things into cloud events, uh, I think would help make this, um, I think would greatly help adoption here, especially if cloud events has some great experience around being able to do those transformations um, almost automatically. Um, so there's, there's uh, that's what that's describing. Do you yeah. see that? Do you see that as a strictly as an SDK issue, or is that is that like a separate repo with uh, you know perhaps containerized drivers that would then be able to to transform those events? I, how do, how would you see that that working with it with the lens of this SDK effort? Yeah, great question. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet. You know, if I'm just throwing ideas out there, uh, you know, could we investigate some type of language agnostic way of defining these transformations that the SDKs could require in? So when they receive some event in its kind of native format, um, and you're expecting that, and you could add in this module that already has the transformation mapping uh, into the SDK, and it should be able to use that uh, that knowledge to do the transformation automatically. Um, yeah, yeah, because, I, 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 because a lot of the times I, I think the way I think about it, you're having to, to pull or wait for an event to come in from some of these foreign sources, which is a little bit more than just transforming the actual cloud event. And, and so by itself, the, having the transformation is useful, but not sufficient to be able to actually get the event in and, and be, able, be able to sit on that endpoint. Yeah, there's, there's a few phases um, to solve that problem. Getting the event into, uh, into your runtime where the SDK is, is kind of what 
what I've been focused on specifically. Um, if the SDK can help beyond that, I'm not, I'm not sure how it would, but, you know, open to investigating it. But, you know, talking, having this conversation, these are other adjacent conversations that are happening within the working group around event sources and whatnot. Um, you know, I think all those things need to be factored into this. But right now, I believe the SDK is only going to be able to handle kind of what gets into that, what, what gets into the runtime. Did someone else have a comment? Yeah, I was going to ask, and, and then this this may be because I'm a newbie and I didn't realize this was a smaller group than the main group. But yeah, I guess for for this whole area, there's even at a high level, is is this sort of solved um, on a component slash architecture basis, or is this is this on a language basis? So just purely in thinking about it in terms of AWS, like is the is the vague idea at the moment to deploy a component that does the translation, or is the is it more around having um, yeah, in doing it programmatically within each Lambda function. I, I think <clears throat> that this is more concern of maybe something else like similar to the event gateway idea that understands there are certain incomes from HTTP, Kafka, MQP or whatever, and then you can use a component that does a filtering or transformation, and then it would convert it into the proper um, format, and then your SDK is just be your SDK that you work with the object with. I think the transformation is likely more a component sitting next to it, like in order to trigger the process, and to get like the full payload out. It's, I'm not sure if it's directly concerned for the SDK itself. I would see it more as a separate thing for applying filters or transformations um, in order to extract something from MQP or whatever into a cloud event object with the proper metadata. Okay, that's, it, it's, it's super interesting to me. Yeah, I, I think that there's a, few, you know, there's a few ways we're probably gonna have to go after this problem in general. Um, but here's a simple use case that I think you'll you'll be familiar with, Mike. That is, AWS Lambda receives an AWS S3 object created event, and that's in Amazon's native format. Um, being able to just take that native event, which is already in you know uh, JSON, or uh, being able to take that, pass it into the Cloud Events SDK, and out of that, by just using one method on the Cloud Events SDK, you get the you know Cloud Event flavor of that, the Cloud Event AWS. Um, S3 object created event. Yeah, that sounds, that's, to me, sounds brilliant because that, that gives you the whole cross platform nature then. Then you just take 98% of your code and put it in Microsoft and you're good to go. Exactly. Um, now, for other event sources and other places where events are coming in, uh, there's probably going to be some more complications involved. Um, yeah, so, I was, yeah, I was about to say, um, because this is the example, the example here is actually really good because it's kind of, kind of draws a picture of a system that can um, generate the event and send it versus, for example, a system that generates events but doesn't, uh, isn't able to, to send it by itself and you need to do some, some polling and, and then, you know, component, some, some sort of a component enters the picture that will poll for those events and generate actual cloud events and, uh, and this component is then able to, to send them further. Um, uh, which is like a you know different use case, but I think in this case it's not the role of SDK. And but as, as the component will use SDK to produce those cloud events, but it's additional work to to actually get those um, events in in some uh, in some uh, custom format and then convert them to to cloud events. Yep. That's right. Okay, just going to move move through the rest of these real quick. Uh, receiving cloud events easily in code, complement the first bullet. Yaron has mentioned defining an API to, to access the properties of a cloud event. Um, I think Doug Davis added this one in, and I believe what he was talking about is something similar to just having the cloud event kind of be an instance of some type of class that has getters and setters for accessing the data. Um, I believe that's what I saw in Euron's early examples of this like six months ago, but it's been a while, so I'm a little fuzzy on this. Um, next step was generating mock events from a cloud event schema. Chatted about that briefly already. Uh, cloud events extension SDK add-ons and modules. Now this one is, is pretty interesting. Um, in the cloud event specification, there's a uh, this extensions concept 
where you could just put in a lot of different uh, custom properties, essentially. Um, and the reason why this extensions concept was created was because we don't know what should be in the cloud event schema uh, today. It's too early. Um, we need to get this in the hands of users. And we wanted to create this area where users and vendors could come up with um, their own properties within the cloud event envelope um, to help facilitate uh, anything to do with event dispatching and processing. And, um, so I'm, that's I'm what, curious, sorry, sorry, Austin, to, sure. to interrupt. I, I just have a question. Um, because I'm curious, uh, do you guys do you guys see uh, this extensions thing being used for things like, for example, tracing, or it's a wrong place to put things like that, um, like you know, like a tra tracing ID or something like that? I'm I'm curious if if you've seen this being used this way, or do you see it as a proper place for for things like that? Or um, absolutely, yes. So you know, tracing is something where you know. In this, in this world where events, events are increasingly being transported across environments, you know, being able to trace kind of where this event has been is going to be very, very useful. This might be something that we put as a first class citizen within the cloud event schema in the near future. Um, but in the meantime, this extensions area gives us a sandbox to kind of test out some of those ideas. Um, so tracing is something that a lot of people in the working group are, are very interested in. Um, and I think it's probably going to end up as an extension for a little while until we get some real user and kind of market feedback in terms of like what people prefer. Now, the, the interesting part with respect to the SDK is because the specification has this place where you could put in kind of any type of data that you want, um, this creates an opportunity for the SDK to almost have like an add-on or kind of modular experience um, for working with that extra data that's set as an extension. Um, so, for example, if you're a company that is providing some type of, um, you know, event tracing uh, service, you can, you know, have your own, you could have some, you could work off whatever the, uh, the tracing extension is that people are using or come up with your own um, and design a module uh, with the SDK to help you, to help you do some more processing uh, on that event or to help people, I don't know, maybe just pull in tracing information off that event really easily and port it right into your system or your dashboard or something like that. Um, so this is just, this is a very early stage idea. Um, we really got to flesh it out, but I think that there's a lot of opportunity here for the SDK as well as for vendors and end users to be able to extend the specification and do that through the SDK via some type of add on and kind of module experience. Does anyone have any questions on that? Okay, moving on to the next one, transforming lower level events to higher order events automatically. Um, there's been a few people in the working group who have uh, requested this idea of getting away from like provider platform specific events and trying to come up with some, um, some higher order events for things that the providers, for events that the providers and platforms have in common. For example, in the big demo that we did at KubeCon, we had everyone create, I think it was 11 different serverless functions to process two, two different types of events. So these functions had to be written to process um, two types of events. And those events were an AWS S3 object created event and then a, a Microsoft uh, blob storage object created event. And because the functions had to write logic to handle both these events, yet the events kind of had the same properties, the same ideas in them, um, what emerged from that was just requests for, hey, can we just create some general storage object created events that's not platform specific, but maybe an SDK or something could take in a Microsoft blob storage event or an AWS S3 object created event and output this kind of general storage object created event, which has goals around, you know, just being easier um, to write code around without having to worry about, you know, what specific platforms uh, uh, are including in their event data, uh, and also might get us a bit closer to portability one day. Um, so don't know how the SDK would be involved in that, but throwing it out on here. Yeah, that's actually very interesting to me. It's, it sounds, I mean, if this worked, that would be, that would be, that would be very big, that would be, that would be great, I would say, because I'm being able to generalize in events like that. I'm just curious how, maybe I'm, 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 I'm going too far for, for now, but I'm, I'm really curious how that will work because each platform has some like, you know, 
its own ways of accessing the actual object that was created and, and doing something with it and, and probably some, some specific identifiers and so on. So I'm curious, what would be the use case of, of the general, gener like you probably wouldn't be able to access the object without a specific uh, platform SDK. So I'm curious, what's the, the use case of having a generalized um, event like that? Um, how it would work is something that you know we'd have to figure out whether you know if it's possible and what that implementation would look like. Um, you know, going back to the S3 example, um, I, I believe you could take a Cloud Events SDK, and if it had that transformations concept in it, you could just build in a transformation that takes AWS S3 object created and converts it to a storage object created event. Um, as long as you kind of receive that event already and you're able to process it, process it in code. Same goes for the Microsoft version as well. Um, you know, but it's, it's early days, just throwing the suggestion out there, but there's definitely a lot of interest in this, especially just to help people write more portable functions to react to anything. You can see how storage object created, that pattern could be applied for, you know, database record created or something like that. Um, and that's, you know, these things cover a, a broad surface area, but, um, but anyway, the, the idea is out there. Uh, we, could, we could dig into it and figure out how it'll work and if it yeah. could work. Yeah. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, this, this and five should be combined, you know, because this is really a subtopic of the general transformation. Great. I will put that as a sub bullet point here. I was literally just to ask, about to ask how this is different to five. <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> Well, it, it, it is different, but it's very similar because instead of taking the native event and transforming it, you know, straight into a cloud event, it's actually transforming it into a, a totally new cloud event uh, type. Yep, that's correct. Okay, almost through these. Configuration extension for adding middleware the SDK can use to publish events. Yes, that's right. There's a few um, people who are offering middleware uh, for, for cloud events, um, infrastructure to help with the general dispatching and routing of events to, to wherever they need to go. Um, our company does that. We have a product called the Event Gateway. Microsoft, um, uh, who's represented by Clemens in the serverless working group, they have the event grid. Uh, we have Dispatch. A lot of the serverless um, open source compute platforms are doing the same thing. And uh, it would be neat if there was a way to just include the middleware or whatever you're using to help facilitate event delivery um, into the Cloud Events SDK so that the, what the developer gets, what the, the experience that they get is simply being able to do cloud event dot publish. They call the publish method or something like that. And because the configuration is already stored within the SDK, that cloud event will immediately be sent to wherever it needs to go. Um, this could be kind of native configuration or it could be implemented as an extension if we, um, if we add in that functionality for extension add-ons or modules. Is this where, so is this where something like Microsoft's um, bindings feature might kick in? Because that's one of the things I'm really interested about seeing from, from this kind of uh, open standard. Highly likely, yeah. There could be um, that could be that could be included in here. I, I'm sure it could be baked into the SDK a number of ways, actually. Okay, that's and that's myself and, and and John Chapin. We've always thought that 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 bindings feature that Azure Functions have is one of its clear um, differentiators over over Lambda. Yeah, we've heard the same. A lot of people, a lot of people really appreciate that feature. Um, and there's there's definitely a lot of opportunity to leverage that and even replicate it perhaps in the in this SDK. But I think we're we're a little ways out from that. Um, last up, version SDK with specification. Um, that's you know that's simply as the specification gets um, changes, we're going to come out with a new version of the SDK. Pretty simple. Pretty simple use case. Okay, that's everything. Um, <clears throat> first off, are we missing anything? Does anyone have any further ideas now that we've been through all those? 
I think there's there's also more of meta logistical issues with respect to, you know, do we do we want to think about how we would formulate these SDKs into GitHub naming structures? Um, how we would extend that language? And how we would 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 we want generic names? Do we want language specific? bindings to, to make it flow better within the language. I think that there's a whole bunch of meta issues uh, beyond just these. I totally agree. Um, and we'll have to figure all of that out. Uh, I think perhaps the first step will be to figure out what this thing does, what it's focused on, um, and then figure out how we're going to coordinate logistics, uh, figure out the implementation details, figure out where this thing is gonna be uh, hosted at the end of the day, which I imagine is just going to be the cloud events uh, GitHub repo. Um, all right, do we want to go through the exercise of trying to stack rank these? Does anyone have any strong feelings as to what should be number one? What should be the first priority? I would say uh, basically creating cloud events with the proper version of, of the spec uh, and creating the objects like the must have for the, for the SDK, um, because that's where you start. But um, I would start with, with this. Can two and four be merged? Yes. Okay. Um, Personally, I think schema is the most important thing. Schema is the most important thing. Okay. It seems okay. So that was one one vote for what I think is just instantiating cloud events easily in code. Um, but there was an additional comment in there. With the version for with the, the. So is that nine? Current yeah, with cloud. with the nine exactly. I would I would. Version. Yeah, I would also see that as a first code accessibility there. Okay. Um, and I, I wasn't able to see who made the comment around schema, why that should be, why that should be first. But I'm curious if you could follow up with some additional details as to why you feel that way. Yeah, sure. If, if you have the schema in there, this is Scott, by the way. Hi, Scott. Uh, you don't necessarily need the, the easy in code part because you can easily look at what the meta is supposed to look like. Like you, you know the shape of that event. Mm -hmm. Right, and that gives you things like defaulting and validation and programmatic uh, lookup of what is actually in the, the message object. Yeah, those are good points. Um, Scott, how, how do you, um, to, you know, given this is just an MVP initial version, do you have any ideas on how we would actually um, implement this? So I've, I've done a lot of JSON schema work uh, for OSB. Oh, great. Um, so I would assume something like that. You can also, um, using that, you could, you could inject like form schema and things like that and generate UI so that you can have a producer that makes your events that you can test your application based on what it's expecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our company makes the serverless framework and helping out developers just generate events easily, test them easily, validate them easily is, is something that we really want to solve because that's, that's a big part of the workflow over there. Um, so this definitely resonates with me. Uh, I'm not personally sure if, if that's, if that's the first priority, I'm still leading toward instantiating cloud events easily in code. Um, but Scott, do you think this could actually work with JSON schema? I, I need to read the spec more. Mm -hmm. So let me get back to you. So sure. I, I'm wondering what exactly is meant by event schema. Is it um, the payload? Is it the attributes? I mean, the event context or what is I, covered? I, I if I had a vote, it would be the entire object. Um, yeah, when we talk about uh, the cloud events 
specification itself is kind of uh, the schema for the envelope. Um, and then here, I think this was specific to the actual payload, um, the information it contains. Okay. Uh, we, we, all, we already have in the Cloud Event System specification a schema URL, um, which I believe is focused just on the payload. Okay, I'm, I'm just wondering uh, if there isn't already enough uh, tooling around for um, taking something like a JSON schema and, and validating um, something against it. So is this really cloud event specific? Um, <clears throat> you know, what, what we put in that schema, I, I think will be somewhat cloud event specific, but in my opinion, being able to leverage anything that's out there in the ecosystem that's already popular and solves this problem really well is definitely in our best interest. I would say, I would say it's probably not specific to the spec, but um, SDK might be um, as a as a helper. Obviously, there's a there's this 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 there's an art of not overloading the SDK with 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 tools and features, but it might be worth yeah. adding as just as a helper. So I'm leaning towards number one as being my uh, number one pick. But Scott, I, I would like for you to be able to look at number two and come back with a proposal for what you think the event schema would look like. Yeah, sure. I can do that. Okay. I'm going to echo what Mark said. Um, I really like number two. I just would love some clarity as to how we could actually get that done. Whereas number one seems, seems like a, an action item that people can kind of go run with. And then maybe number five, actually receiving the events. Yes. Receiving event, cloud events easily in code. Yeah, I'm not sure where to put this. I guess would this be like a number, a number three, a separate item? Maybe number two. I don't know. Like, I, I agree. Like schemas is important, but not the number one important thing. Um, and you think this is? I'm, I, I have to confess, I'm still trying to figure out what what they're trying to capture in this. Yeah, the, isn't the receiving a little bit related also to the actual implementation? Like you say something down there in your proposal with middleware from a node perspective, but if you transport it to other languages, you could completely have different mechanisms of actually receiving them in, in the system. For right. instance, um, we have a Java API that basically implements the spec 01. That's just a very tiny jar file. It is easy to combine that with Java-based eventing. So I can just very simply create um, observers using some Java eventing framework. Then I have a way to actually receive them in my system. Right. Yeah, I think there's a, some language specific use cases for that, which are not, you know, general things, but should be concerned of SDKs for different languages. Um, uh, for like things that, you know, can deal with the events in, in, in different languages um, that, that are not general, but, but language specific. That's right. That's going to be a, a challenge we deal with as we go to implement all this functionality across the languages. Is, should, can we rewrite this possibly? Would this be a little bit clearer? Um, you know, from what I remember from Euron's specification, and unfortunately he's not on the call, was that he wanted a way, he wanted simple getters. Um, so it kind of follows these two things. And what you get are, you know, an instance of, uh, of a class or something with a, a simple kind of getter and setter method so that you can get, you can get data out of the event pretty easily. That's how that's how I read it. Um, maybe we could rewrite it to say something like getters and setters for cloud event instances. I'd actually make that a sub bullet of one. Yep, I agree with that. And it's really what is what does the API look like? within the SDK, and part of that is, do you have getters, et cetera, et cetera? 
why setters? Isn't an event something that is immutable? Well, if you're creating a new event. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I have a builder builder for that then. Okay. But the, um, in, in my Java example, for instance, there is an interface that just defines the different events that I created through the builder. So um, I have the event itself immutable. Right. Hey, hey. I mean, yeah, I guess language it, that's a, that, that's an implementation. Detail. Yeah, right. Language specifics. Okay. Yeah. You know, until until an event is actually emitted, then you should be able to to modify it. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is also this is something that's being discussed and has been discussed for many months within the Cloud Events Working Group. Um, what can be changed? What can't be changed? Uh, and I don't think we have a definitive answer yet. Um, largely leaning towards immutability as much as possible, of course. Um, but then there's a few different parties that interact with events potentially along the way and giving them the opportunity to set information. For example, middleware. Should middleware be able to kind of put some information in the event or modify anything? That's a uh, um, point of contention within the group. Okay. Pretty straightforward so far. Can you opinion. remove uh, number nine? I think you encompass that number one. Yep. Number nine is gone. Okay. Um, so for, for me, for me, number four, four and five. Carl, what was that? Carl, it sounds like you dropped out, dropped off for a second there. Oh, sorry. Uh, I was, yeah, uh, I'm having some electric work at home, so my Wi Fi will be behaving weird. Let me just switch to cell phone. Um, so uh, I was, I was going to say that number four and five are, are equally important to me because they, they define how I'm going to consume and events and how I'll be able to receive them or to create new cloud events from non cloud events. Not events that are not cloud events yet. Um, so I would say they're both uh, really important to me. So I'll put them both as a, as the next, um, next item. I sort of feel the same way. Um, Okay, but before we add these in, does anyone have any other thoughts on what three, what number three should be? Doesn't sound like it. I guess to me, uh, the, the, what I would value most is, is something quick and easy from an existing, to in, in, that I can incorporate into an existing platform, either either Azure Functions or Lambda. So whatever gets me to that the fastest is what I care about. I, even if it's a prototyping and being able to give it to some people to say, how does this feel? I'd actually say number three should be number two. Okay, interesting. Okay. So in other words, uh, you know, I think I think that we do have some questions about the you know the the schemas and how that would interact operate. But assembling cloud events from various transports and encodings is pretty fundamental for being able to take the take the actual event and getting it into the system. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that as well. Um, okay, I think that's a good point. <clears throat> and by the way, none of this is set in stone. We're gonna take this and propose it to the surplus working group on Thursday um, and get some feedback from them. Just curious, Mark, what do you think our first step should be? Uh, on on this on this um, in this priority uh, assembling cloud events for various transports and, and encodings. Well, we we need it's really understanding the scope of what it, what of what that truly means. 
is it take, taking an input stream? Is it uh, are taking a taking a blob of data coming in, say HTTP, and being able to, to parse it, et cetera? I I don't have a good answer for that. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm right. trying to. That's what I'm trying to get from you, but because I don't have the answer either. Um, yeah, right. so, so, so you take AMQT, you know, more of a binary protocol coming in. Uh, you, we know that we need to transform it, and it's probably on a per protocol basis, but it's going to be very specific to that to that transport. So, we need. I'd say identify the the transports, which are the ones that we are currently defining. Yep. And then look at what what, what would be the, the generalized uh, decodings and encodings that we do for 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 each of those. Mm -hmm. And and the transport specifications that we have currently, it's HTTP, AMQP, um, NATS. We have NATS. <sighs> We also have a webhook specification. Right, yeah, that's true. Do you know what the status is of that? I don't. Okay. We also have MQTT. MQTT. Oh, yes. I was just, just pulling up the site to make sure I didn't forget it. Okay. But again, it, you know, so why would we do this? And it's primarily to have consistency and to uh, gain adoption of cloud events by having a, an off-the-shelf. Here's how you would how here's how you would implement a name QP source going into cloud events in, into a cloud event. Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah, we just need further clarity as to how we're actually going to go about this. Um, which we can present to the working group on, on Thursday and get some feedback. Okay, we have four, we have four priorities so far. Um, let's spend the next couple minutes just maybe sorting the last four items here. I think one of them we already covered, so number three. Um, does anyone have any feelings on number five? The fifth priority should be. I think some of these can also or should be bullet points. So generating mock events from a cloud event schema. Um, that's, uh, I, I believe that's a, a sub point in number three. And you could, you could also say that on number one, we would want to be able to test it. And part of that test would be creating and, and uh, you know, encoding, decoding, et cetera, a lot of events. So in other words, we would need mock, mocking of events for test purposes there. I agree. Do you think that's a bullet point in number one, or is that its own? It's a bullet point. Okay. Mocking of cloud events for test. Okay. Last, we have cloud events extension, uh, extension add-ons and modules, and then configuration extension for adding middleware the SDK can use to publish events. All similar, isn't it? Yeah. So what if uh, what if numbers what if we put cloud events extension SDK add-ons and modules as number five, and then the middleware as a yeah. sub bullet point of that? Yep. Sounds good to me. All right, we got something. Cool. Okay, let's. Um, we got. We have ten minutes left. Let's see if we can break these down into cloud events SDK versions. Uh, we've got a version zero point one, zero point two, zero point three. 
what should we put in uh, SDK version 0.1? I, uh, question first, which is, mm -hmm. I assume that these versions are independent of the actual cloud event spec versions? Um, I, I, be I believe we're probably going to have to decouple uh, them. Increment the, well, yeah, I guess so. Unless we decide just to increment the version every time the new specification comes out and, well, we, we, could, and we update it. We could start out of the gate and have a, a version awareness built into the SDK so you can always be backwards compatible. So you, you ask the SDK, generate me a, a VO.1 event and it spits that out. Yeah, I love that. That that that, that sounds and, the best. And these milestones could be release candidates or alpha, beta, whatever. So that, for instance, the first alpha version or first beta version of version O would be, for instance, uh, item number one compliant with the specification O one, and so on. That O two or would be then like the next release candidate matching the same O1 one specification. Is that something that could fly? Perhaps. I, I, like the, I like the idea of being able to work with the different versions of cloud events. It's going to you know, increase the amount of work we have to do, of course, but um, it is something that people are going to, are going to want. It almost sounds like a, a totally different priority to me, unless this is just baked into number one. I think if you build in that functionality into the library to start instead of try to add it later, it, it becomes easier. Yeah. And then people have to follow that pattern versus try to shim it back in once we've passed that point where it's non-trivial. Yep. Okay. Do we think this is a, a totally kind of separate priority? It's probably a bullet point on one. Yeah, I agree. Okay. <clears throat> so in that vein, you, you could get the SDK to have some sort of negotiation where you can ask it what's the biggest uh, or what, what's the compatible versions it produces. Mm -hmm. And then you can follow correct JSON semver with the, uh, the SDK. Yep. Uh, which versions it uses? I guess what I'm trying to say is that maybe the version doesn't really matter, but the milestone, like an abstract number. There could be multiple releases between each milestone. Oh yeah, right. December. When I export for new cloud event versions. Okay. Yeah, we'll present this to the working group and we'll we'll get some feedback and see how they think we should handle all this. Um, all right, so putting this into milestones, um, how do we feel about just putting number one as Cloud Events SDK version 0 0.1? Love it. Yep, I like it too. It's also Gold giving stuff. us um, a good quick start. Yes, yes, yes. Do we want to bound? the languages that we would support for the 0 0.1, you know, and it isn't that we have to name those languages, but yeah, you know, we want to support three languages. Um, I, I'd love to do that personally. <laughs> I think, it, I think we're subject to the, the, the voluntary effort that we'll have kind of on hand. Um, so, Right. I, I, I'm just thinking about ensuring that we're going down the right path. We could implement it in a single language, 
but mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't give us as much data about usability or how how you would encode it into other languages. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, well, how about we just set a goal for three languages, supporting three languages? Okay. And um, we'll see if we have um, the help to make that happen. If we do, fantastic. Um, okay, so what if, because um, we only have four minutes left, what if in version 0 0.2 we put assembly cloud events for various transports and encodings? Any objections? No? And these are, <clears throat> this gives us some sense of priority. Obviously these, there's, each one of these things could be a lot of work. Um, so we're gonna have to put some limits on, on this. But, um, but at least it gives us some sense of priority. We could present this to the working group, get some feedback. Um, and then maybe cloud events, uh, instantiating cloud events easily via event schemas. Can we put that in 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 or should that be 0 0.3? I think it'd be interesting to, to get more scope on it, but put it in 0 0.2 for now. Yeah. Let's put that in 0 0.2 because it seems like something we could lean on for we can lean on other popular tools to help implement faster. Yeah. Um, uh, however, of course, all these things, I think we need to uh, more clearly define the scope. Um, but at least we've got some priorities. Uh, we've, we've got some, some areas where we, which we think we need to focus on first. We'll present this, present this to the working group on Thursday. At the same time, um, I want to ask, uh, there's a few people who've already started, like Matthias, um, and uh, you guys over at VMware, you've already started designing some cloud events SDKs. Are you um, interested in continuing this work within a specific language? Yeah, for, for our case, for sure. And Matthias, you're doing the uh, a Java implementation, correct? That's right. Yeah, for dispatch, we're doing Go. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to um, work on that within the cloud events. And it, it goes without saying that I would assume we would uh, put an applicable license onto it and put it into the cloud events uh, repo. Um, yes. Does anyone have any objections to doing that? Well, I think in order for it to be a quote unquote official cloud events, SDK needs to be part of the repo. Yep. I'd okay. also say on uh, the assembling cloud events from various transports and codings on 0 0.2, mm -hmm. perhaps we could say uh, implement at least n number of those transports and n to be decided. Meaning, is it do we just implement one of them? Do we implement all of them? Yes. Okay, I'll put this as a, as a comment, a quick comment. Um, we only have a one minute left. We have three languages. Uh, we have Red Hat working on Java, VMware, Dispatch working on Go. Uh, our company would love to contribute to the JavaScript implementation. Um, is anyone gonna work on any other languages? Didn't someone already start a Python? Oh, someone did start a Python. If I remember correctly. Yes. I'll, I'll add them. <laughs> I'll add them to this, uh, to this later. Um, cool. We've, we've just hit the time, uh, the time limit. So uh, we've got a good sense of priorities here. We'll present this to the working group on Thursday and we'll have a, a longer conversation uh, around this and um, hopefully narrow in on a, a more clearly defined scope for some of these SDK versions. Um, okay, in the meantime, before we wrap, does anyone have any other comments or, or, or major outstanding questions? No, thanks for putting this on. 
yeah. what, what, what are what are next steps? We're going to talk to we're going to present this to the cloud events team on Thursday, and then set up a subsequent call. That's correct. This is not a weekly call as of yet. Um, we're going to pitch. We'll, we'll pitch this to the the working group and figure out how to move forward uh, based on that conversation. Probably we'll schedule another call in which I'll I'll reach out to all of you. Great. Uh, I so I, I I grabbed the Python version out of the uh, mailing list from GitHub and put it into chat if you want that. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. All right. Okay, Thanks everyone. All. Chat with you on Thursday. Thanks for your help. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.